Future E here, after having spent eight hours, yes, eight hours, editing this video down into what you are about to see, um, and re-watching this, these two episodes in particular, I had, I said that Regulators was my favorite of the old Stephen King theorist stuff, but I think this video, this video here with the edited content from the original videos is now my favorite. You can see the excitement and the passion in my eyes when everything starts to click together and how happy I am to have proven myself that I wasn't just, you know, cuckoo. Um, also, if you are a fan of the channel or a friend of mine, I like to consider all my fans friends, so if you're a friend of mine, hang around to the very end of the video, or you can even scrub all the way until this this dude with this shirt shows up again in the video after the Black House section. Um, and I want you to listen to what I have to say, because I have quite a bit to say, and I got a bit emotional. But anyways, uh, that's all future he has to say uh, on with the video welcome to church of the chair where we don't always hate the stuff we did in the past i'm your host e and today we're heading to the territories if you're new around here i need to give you a warning in this series i will be spoiling all of stephen king's work so if you haven't read everything he's published i suggest you click away now you've been warned today we're talking about the talisman and Black House, the Jack Sawyer series that he wrote with Peter Straub. So how does the Talisman and Black House tie into the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower? Let's get into that. A word of warning, you've already seen the time code. This is going to be a long one because I do not hate my original videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit out some of the rambling nonsense where I went off on tangents and piece them together here. You're probably looking at close to a 30-40 minute video. So sit back, grab some snacks, and relax. Let's jump into it. Um, I'm gonna start right off on page six. There is a reference to a movie called Blaze. Now we know from the introduction to Blaze that Stephen King wrote Blaze way back in the way back uh, before this one was published. One thing we need to keep in mind as we're going through this episode of Thursday Theorist is uh, the time frame in which Stephen King and Peter Straub wrote this book. The mention of a movie called Blaze that uh, the mother, Jack's mother, ends up winning uh, an Academy Award for, I believe, on... Page 80, Sloat uh, mentions a train. Um, the, there's a lot of this stuff, and we'll get to Black House also, but there are some fan theories that I am enjoying right now about the Institute because the cover has a boy on a train. So I'm wondering at this point if all of this is going to tie back around. I'm also wondering if the Institute is the third Jack Sawyer novel without Straub. I'm going to stop you there, bub, because I have something to add to this. While back then, before the Institute came out, I believed that the Institute was the third Jack so Sawyer novel just because of the themes and everything, and of course that was not the case, but I still would like to talk about the similarities between the ideas and the way Black House ends. We will, of course, get to Black House in a minute, but with the way Black House ends and this institute of kids and multiple institutes and more than one Black House, which you will hear when we get to the Black House section of this video, I can't help but feel like this was maybe supposed to be the third Jack Sawyer book, and because Straub was in ill health or because he was slowing down or for whatever reason King decided to take what they were working on that might have tied into the Jack Sawyer world or the territory series whatever you want to call it and made it his own. This is all speculation but this is also the Stephen King theorist. It doesn't have to be true. I find it interesting that given the parallels between how Black House ended and what happens in the Institute I can't help but feel like these two books, like these three books, The Talisman, Black House, and The Institute, were at one time all connected, if not still connected, by our own fan theories. Uh, because we were told back in 2005 by Straub that they were working on a third book, and King in 2006 or 2007, I'd have to look up the interview again, but King said that they were working on another novel, and all of a sudden there's no more talk about a third Jack Sawyer novel. 
So, but it seems like they were going somewhere else with the trains, with the with the train idea, and having a train on the front of the institute has given me uh, has has sparked even more. Having read fan theories, um, there's a uh, Tony's King page, I think it is on Instagram. I can't I can't recall if that's it or not. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I think he brought up this idea first that these that the trains were connected. To uh, the talisman and well, actually the black house. But we'll get to that when we get to black house. Right now we're focusing on this one. Page 121. I'm going to go ahead and read this one. I don't remember exactly what my note was. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, he was trying to fasten the front of his uniform over his bulging gut while holding a curly French horn like instrument at the same time. Now, I'm not saying this is the horn of Eld. I'm saying that the horn of Eld is, is carried by guards and knights and all that stuff. Um, so could this be a, a kind of not running joke, but a running theme with, uh, with characters in Midworld? You know, could, could these characters just carry around these horns and maybe the horn of Eld is almost like, you know, Excalibur kind of deal? I don't know. It's a wild theory, but it piqued my interest, so I thought I'd tell you guys about it. Let me know what you think down there in the doobie doo. Um, at 392, I don't know, this is, this is completely nuts. This one blew me away because nobody's mentioned it. Not a single person. But on page, in this edition anyways, on page 392 of this edition of the book, probably all the paperback copies, uh, he mentioned Sidewinder, Colorado. I mean, come on. It's, <laughs> and it's definitely, it's definitely the mountain because he talks about a mine. We're going to get to mine stuff again here in a second. Uh, not really mine stuff, but we'll, you'll see. Uh, he mentioned Sidewinder, and nobody, uh, Sidewinder is of course where The Shining occurred. Um, it's where the Overlook Hotel was located. Um, and nobody online that I can find has mentioned that whatsoever. So now we have a hard connect. I had some loose connects for The Shining, um, but I, either I didn't catch this the first time I read it, um, or, you know, it just completely slipped from my memory. He, I mean, he, it's a hard tie, and this book has a hard tie connection to the Dark Tower series, so we have our hard connection for The Shining. Also, uh, Carrie, um, let's see here, Carrie uh, da, 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 Abra from uh, Doctor Sleep, uh, Charlie from Firestar, all these uh, different uh, psycho, uh, psych, psychic abilities or telekinetic abilities or whatnot. Um, there's also stuff, all these kids are breakers, and we'll go into breakers more as we get to that discussion because there's a lot of spoilers for the Dark Tower stuff when I start talking about Breakers. Next up, at page uh, 449, they talk about the Rainbird Towers. Now, I didn't bother looking this one up, so Patrick, if you want to check uh, your 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 list, your, your search and find for King, um, isn't the, uh, the agent in Firestarter, the Native American uh, man, isn't his name Rainbird? I think it is. Loose connection, loose connection. Let's see here, and let's look at, uh, we're going to talk about how all these books tie together, but I want to look at the publication date for, I think this was what, 80? 1980. So all of this stuff, there's a five-year period that I'm, I'm going to focus on here in a second, uh, even when discussing a t the Tabitha King book. Uh, the Blasted Lands, are the Blasted Lands the Wastelands? I think they are. Um, it, I, I think it's the, sa the same area, the train Trains go through there. Um, well, there's a train track through there at the very least. And, of course, we know Blaine the Mono in the Wastelands. That's all we're going to talk about there. But there's another connection for you. The, there's a huge, and I didn't notice this at first until my friend Patrick Costin uh, sent me an uh, email about how many times the color green pops up in the Stephen King universe. And then in this one, I saw it everywhere. Um, if you know the ending of Wizard and Glass, you will know that green or emerald green is an important color. But there's a green bottles, green hallways at Richard Sloat School, a green metal, green sand. There is so much green in this book, I, I can't help but feel like it is an allusion to something. Um, and if it is an allusion to Wizarding Glass, I don't know. Okay, there's a Quonset, he talks about wolves, the, the Quonset huts. Um, in, in the book, and it seems awfully familiar to where, what was it, Jake goes in, uh, is it Wolves of the Kala, I think it is, Jake goes to the, uh, the Quonset huts and finds all the bodies everywhere. I'm wondering if that is, uh, if that scene in Wolves harkens back to, to this little village community 
from Wolf. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to say one more thing and then I'm going to go to uh, the, the final note. So this is, this is a stretch, but bear with me. Um, there's, during the night segment at the end of the book, um, even though I believe that that section was written by Peter Straub, um, there is a certain red-eyed entity that inhabits the, the suits of armor there at the end of the book. The more I read about it, the more I saw similarities to Tack from, from the regulators and from Desperation. There is a bunch of stuff that, that feels like it is from that, especially regulators. You know how in the regulators, all the eyes are popping out of the head? What well, is said that the eyes exploded in this one. And they have the red eye entity. And we have Tack who has red eyes. Now, I'm not saying that the regulators was written way back then. I'm saying that Stephen King maybe took from this section to do the monster from that. And I've already connect, I've already theorized that the entity known as Tack is nothing but those red lights, just like I believe the entity It is the dead lights. That is, they are nothing but the lights. At the same time, at the same time as all of this, you look toward the wizard's rainbow, the different colors of that, and then you have the talisman in here. I mean, if the talisman isn't one of the balls, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's either all of them or one of them. Um, the talisman does feel like it is all of them, is what it feels like. Like they're all encased in that because they're talking about all the worlds and galaxies and everything. Now we are going to go talk about Gwendy's button box. I have it's up here in the stack. I'm not going to drag it out. But in and here's where the connections come into play with all these books being written at the same time. I said a long time ago, well not a long time ago, when I did a Small World by Tabitha King, when I did my theory video on that one. I said I brought up uh, that one of the characters talks about a box that could, you could press a button and something would happen in the world. Um, and it's, it's a character's thoughts. It's like, I've always thought about this box that, you know, what whatever. It sounds like Gwendy's button box. Um, that's, even though it's the imagination of that character um, and it's not an actual item in the story, it does feel like Gwendy's button box. And... Uh, Small World was, let's see, I don't want to move the figure, but I think it's eight, between 81 and 84. That's really the time frame we're working on here. Um, also, between 80, it was just basically 80 and 85, there's a bunch of stuff that Stephen King bundled together. Uh, like he got the idea of how to end It and connect all the worlds while he was writing The Wastelands. And he wrote uh, It between 81 and 85, I believe. I know it was published in 86. Now, going back to Gwendy's Button Box. On page 263 of this edition of the book, I'm going to read you an entire section. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind uh, in the talisman, when people flip and go to the territories, items become either subtly different or massively different. Like, um, I think, you get, what does the, the guitar pick turn into? I can't remember. But the, the guitar pick turns, well, the guitar pick is a pick in the territories, and I can't remember what it is in the real world. Uh, but that's what uh, Jake, Jack, that's what Jack uh, uses to kill the knights. But here, uh, interlude, Sloat in this world, two. From the pocket of his bulky parka, he had bought it convinced that from the Rockies east, America was a frigid wasteland after October 1st or so, now he was sweating rivers, Morgan Sloat took a small steel box. Below the latch were ten small buttons and an oblong of cloudy yellow glass a quarter of an inch high and two inches long. He pushed several of the buttons carefully with the fingernail of his left hand pinky, and a series of numbers appeared briefly in the readout window. Sloat had bought this gadget, billed as the world's smallest safe, safe in Zurich. According to the man who had, who had sold it to him, not even a week in a crematory oven would breach its carbon steel integrity. What do we know about Gwendy's button box? Gwendy's button box has all these buttons on it. And every time she pressed a button, she got a shiny new coin. This item from Morgan Sloat is a bank. Now, 
is Morgan Slope a twinner of Randall Flagg? I don't know. Um, we do know we do know of his twinner in the book, but there are other worlds than these. There are indeed. And now on to a whole nother world with a much darker video for a much darker book. Here are my initial thoughts from the original theorist video for Black House. I have a quote here. It says, uh, the human soul contains an infinity of rooms. After all, some of them vast, some no bigger than a broom closet, some locked, some few imbued with a radiant light. Um, I, th I felt that that was uh, a... It, it, whether it be Straub or King who wrote that, I feel like that is a quote, not only a, 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 true, a true quote, um, as far as the brain is concerned, and, later, and not later on, uh, it's, very, well, it's very close behind this one, you have Dreamcatcher, where the idea that you have your memory storage unit and all that stuff, um, I find these little passages um, in King's books that, that hearken to other stories, and maybe they do, maybe they don't, maybe he wrote them around the same time, um, and he just, you know, pieced them together, or he had one idea, and that's one thing that I'm going to talk about later with the Dark Tower series, is, but basically, decade by decade, he had certain ideas that he cobbled together and added to the Dark Tower universe. That's why all of his stuff, eventually, even the early stuff, like Carrie, ties into the Dark Tower, because he went back and made it tie in to the Dark Tower. Um, I thought I think that's exceedingly cool that he would do that to make sure that his entire bibliography connected. Um, my my theory, by the way, is you know the the Tommyknockers and Midworld and all that. As far as that's concerned, that that they, well the Tommyknockers and a aliens are from Midworld. They're the they're the old ones. They're from the Prim, you know, whatever it might be. They're creatures from that universe and we just happen to call them aliens. Uh, Pennywise from It is one of those creatures, the Outsiders one of those creatures, the aliens from Dreamcatcher are those creatures because all these creatures react in the same way. They either feed off of fear, they eat children, all these all these creatures have the same uh, characteristics. So, and there's way too much in the Stephen King universe for that to be, oh, that's just him reusing ideas. I honestly, especially in The Outsider, if you want to watch my Thursday Theorist on that, especially with the end of The Outsider, you cannot say that, that, that these creatures are not connected. Pennywise, Dreamcatcher, Tommyknockers. But where I go with Carrie is, I connect Carrie, and this is episode number one, way back in the way back. I connect Carrie because Carrie was in Chamberlain, Maine, and Haven, where Tommyknockers happened, isn't too far away from Chamberlain, Maine. But with Carrie, I think that the, the farther away from Haven you get, the less the powers are, um, uh, the, the less the effects of the ship happen. Um, but as far as like tainting water supplies or uh, tainting the air, whatever you want to call it, that ship has existed for a long time in the dirt. But before Bobby digs it up in the Tommyknockers, there are plenty, plenty of... Uh, uh, of, there's plenty of time that the ship has been down there in the earth, whereas uh, it, she digs it up and it gets more powerful, but who's to say that that, that force has not, you know, bled over, because once she start, once Bobby digs it out of the ground, all of these, uh, all the people in the town end up with some kind of ability, or psychic ability, or some kind of mental ability, basically. Um, and I think that that has over, that's why all of Stephen King's books have some kind of psychic. Uh, now, as far as that tying to Midworld, like I said, Pennywise is definitely a creature from Midworld, whether he's like the Crimson King or part of the Crimson King or whatever it is, or like Mr. Munchen in this book. We'll get to that. Going back to this one, that's how I connect all of this stuff, and that that's not really important to this uh, this book, but just to, I mean, we're, we're 57 episodes away, or 56 episodes away from the first episode, so just to give you guys a recap of where we've gone so far, that's it. Uh, on page 49, there's a lot of stuff I, I'm, I marked in here that is obvious. Of course, it ties into the Dark, the dark Tower directly. Um, with the Crimson King and Sheol, or however you want to pronounce it, it's like, it's S-H-E-O-L, uh, which, it, which, I have to go back and do an update video for Revival because Revival connects hard 
to this one. With, with Revival, the end of Revival obviously happens in Endworld. Now, I mean, there, there's so much... Sheol is mentioned in Revival. There's so many connections there that I completely forgot about. Like I said, I was not in a good place the first time I read this. Um, and they were so far apart, but I do believe that Revival and Black House were written close together. I could be way off. Um, it could have just been an idea that he had sitting around, um, or it could just be part of his canon universe in his head. He's like, I'm just going to tie this together here at the end. Um, I find it strange that he, he tends to tie in uh, weird books to each other. Like, uh, forget all the connections that I mentioned Pennywise is mentioned in, in Dreamcatcher with, with that. So he ties these things, to, like 11, uh, 22, 63, that has Richie and Bev from, from It. And I find it fascinating. Um, also, It is a centerpiece of the entire King universe. It's right smack dab in the middle and things branch off from that book all the time. Even more so, I think, than The Dark Tower because he's bringing up Derry and all that stuff. We're constantly going back to Derry, Pennywise or... The town of Derry is mentioned as much, if not, the Crimson King throughout this, or the Randall Flag in the Stephen King universe. On page 249, The Wizard of Oz is mentioned. This is the second time in this Talisman series that The Wizard of Oz has been mentioned, and the color green is important. We discussed that in Talisman. It pops up all the time. Patrick uh, looked it up, and it's found the color green is a, <laughs> green, um, is a symbol throughout the, the Stephen King universe. And then when you get to Wizard and Glass, uh, the fourth Dark Tower book, it literally ends in the em Emerald Kingdom or something like that, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. But the Wizard of Oz is mentioned in this one, and there's a character named Wendell Green. So once again, we're back on that Wizard of Oz bullshit. Uh, 259, someone says thank you. Um, T-H-A-N-K-E-E. -E. That's, of course, from the Dark Tower. Uh, 264, there's a green car. Uh, 300, page 300, there's a revival reference. Uh, of course, it wasn't a revival reference back then, unless, of course, it was. Okay, there's, I, I actually didn't check this, but if you guys want to do some fact-checking for me, um, let's see here. We are talking about, uh, about Tyler, Mr. Sawyer. Do you know that lookout point on Highway 93, right where it reaches the top of the big hill about a mile south of Arden? Where do they go to the lookout point in Revival? If, if I'm completely off base, that's fine. It just seems like with the hard connect for the ending of Revival and Sheol being mentioned in Revival, I'm wondering if this is the same Finney area uh, that they're talking about. And like I said I could be completely off base. I forgot to check it before. I don't know why I just looked right over my <laughs> looked right over that one. But that's something for the community to do. I always like to leave something for you guys to find. So if you guys want to fact check that, go ahead. Um, there's also something to take into account that highways and byways and county roads and all that stuff change all the time. So maybe it could also be a twinner of the area, but it's a lookout point. There's a lookout point in Revival. Take that for what you will. Um, I like connections like that. Uh, 417, oh actually, no, we want to talk about 398 first. 398, uh... I seem to remember that uh, I ha found a connection to uh, the Regulators and Desperation. And it's, uh, let's see here. When Jack said said it was back in the woods, I knew what he was talking about. It had a clear place surrounded by all these sparkling lights. Once again, we have um, any illusion or glamour used in the Stephen King universe is usually just lights. You have the dead lights from, um, from it. From Pennywise, I think the entity Pennywise is those lights, the dead lights. I think that is the entity, and he just got stuck in the form of the spider. King says in the book that he got that uh, Pennywise got stuck in the form of a spider, and that's not his final form. He just couldn't remember what his final form is. What's more forgettable than some lights, right? Um, next on, on on that list, we have Tack who in the regulators is basically reduced to a bunch of red lights. So you have another entity that is just basically lights. Um, and then to top that all off, we have on page 417, uh, I wrote in here, exploding eyes. Yes, two separate things destroy his concentration. The first is that he sees Mouse slamming himself back and forth on his bike as he goes into the curve, as if he is trying to scratch his back on the thickening air. I love that line, by the way. Um, the second is that the pressure behind his eyes triples in force, and immediately after he sees Mouse going into what he is, sh what is surely a fall, 
The blood vessels in his eyes explode. From deep red, his vision shifts rapidly to almost black. Once again, you have exploding eyes. Now, these are just the vessels, but there's a pressure. Uh, if you remember in the regulators, uh, I think in Desperation also, any time Tech took someone over, the eyes bulged because there was an immense pressure in the head. 431, he talks about a thousand, thousand doors. World spin, oh yeah, world spin around, world spin around him. I'm not good at reading out loud, y'all, sorry. World spin around him, worlds within worlds, and other worlds alongside them, separated by a thin, thinny, thin membrane composed of a thousand, thousand doors. Um, if only you know how to find them. Uh, it's talking about the doors and the thinnies and all that good stuff. Uh, 456, he literally mentions the Little Sisters of Illyria. Um, it, you can't get any stronger connections here. Next up, we have uh, 467, we talk about Breakers. Yeah, Ted Brodigan, uh, that, that whole crew. Um, the breakers are just, you know, these children with psychic ability, psychic powers. Again, we're dealing with this theme of psychics and mind powers. Carrie, Firestarter, uh, Abra from Dr. Sleep. The, I mean, the list goes on. There's numerous, the, Danny from The Shining, the numerous children throughout this time, and all of them, I feel, are breakers. They all, there's, all of them have that quality. And most of them, I think Danny is the one, Danny is the one on the outside. Most of them are from Maine or around the area. Now, um, there's also, you know, the, the reach of the Dark Tower is not just in Maine. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's only in Maine. I believe it can be just anywhere, of course, but the, the reasoning for the psychic ability so much in Maine, like everybody in Maine's a psychic, the Stephen King. My explanation, my theory is because of the Haven ship. You know, over the years, it's this and that and the other. Um, but it's also funny, in the comment section of my Carrie video, people said, well, it says specifically that she got the powers from her grandfather. But... Carrie, Martha White's mother had these powers also, so I'm not quite sure what y'all are talking about with it's only from dudes. Like, it can only be passed down from dudes because Martha White's mother had had these abilities. It skips a generation, yes, but her, for her, her, I think it says her, he, she got it from her father, that's passed down right there, um, so I'm not sure, someone else mentioned skipping a generation, so that's not correct either, because the father passed, maybe passed it down to Carrie, but what I'm saying is, this stuff, that doesn't have to be the reasoning, people get stuff wrong all the time, and if you remember when they said that in the Carrie, in Carrie, it's someone else writing in the book. It's speculation inside of the universe. It's not fact. It's not the narrator saying, hey, this is it. This is the speculation of people trying to make sense of an odd occurrence. Age of poisoned thought. Rational beings have always harbored telepaths among their number. I was just saying that. Uh, that's true in all worlds, but they're ordinarily rare creatures. Prodigies, you might say. But since the age of poisoned thought came to your world, Jack, since the age of poison thought, what does a ship in, in Tommyknockers do? It poisons these people, it ends up giving them psychic powers and whatnot, but it poisons them. All the teeth fall out of their head, they look like ghosts, they're, they're gaunt, they're terrifying looking individuals, they got vagina tentacles, all different kinds of shit. These people are fucked up, man. These people are messed up. The age of poisoned thought. So you have thought. Psychic ability, the age of poison thought. It literally says rational beings have always harbored telepaths among their number. That's true in all worlds, but they're ordinarily rare creatures. Prodigies, you might say. But since the age of poison thought came to your world, infested it like a demon, such beings have become much more common. Common! Not as common as slow mutants in the Blasted Lands, but common, yes. I, come on, that ties into my entire, my entire theory. My entire theory. Now, does it, does that technically, it, uh, uh, come on, this, this stuff is too, is too close together to actually be a coincidence. Now, did King intend it? Probably not. But the theory works. Uh, 57 episodes in, and I have proved myself time and time again that the theory does pan out if you look at the small details. Um, and people have mentioned uh, issues with some of my theories in the past, and I, I've said, you know, I'm wrong, it could be whatever. I, I've even found some better theories from you guys. So the community as a whole, I want the input. 
But I think I did it, y'all. 57 episodes in, I think we have finally come full circle that all these things are connected to the Dark Tower, even as far back as Carrie. There was a lot of comments like, I don't see how this could be connected because it was his first book, he didn't have it in his mind. Yeah, but he also wrote The Gunslinger before he wrote Carrie. So, I mean, all this, he also wrote the Bachman books. People have said, I don't think the Bachman books tie into the Stephen King universe. That's fine, it's fair, but there's connections in there. Derry is mentioned in The Running Man. All these things, I feel, are connected. 567, they, he literally name drops Rose Red, uh, which is a movie and not a book. The Diary of Ellen Brim, Brim, Rauer, Brim, whatever the hell her name was, was not written by Stephen King, so we're not going to talk about that here. Um, and I don't talk about Stephen King movies, even if he wrote them. Uh, 569, The Gray Man. So, let's see here. What did I find with the gray man? Grays are a thing, of course. I mean, even from early, early King, from Night Shift, uh, a gray matter uh, is, again, you know, alien kind of kind of thing. And then you have uh, Pennywise, you have Dreamcatcher, you have Tommyknockers. All these creatures have the same, um, not same abilities, but the same characteristics, which I find fascinating. Um, let's say Billy Gaffney, Playmate Evers, it was the gray man took Billy, it was the boogeyman. So they're talking about that, I think that's an actual quote from the, uh, from the New York World Telegram. It may not be, but it's in regards to, uh, uh, Albert Fish being the gray man. So I, I found that, that was interesting also. So how long had this, uh, Albert Fish connection been been there for for Stephen King's and Stephen King's mind, or is that a Straub connection? Um, let's see here. In 471, Antak, uh, A N dash T A K is mentioned. 591, they're talking about the trains, Blaine and Patricia, and then there's one other one that we never actually see. 603, there. I think there's a fight that happens. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that it's. Uh, okay, yes. Okay, this is a whole section I'm going to read to you. Uh, because I hear it too and feel it in my stomach. This is when the crew is at Black House trying to, you know, win the day. It's not your breakfast. It's Black House. Jack holds out the squeeze bottle. Go on. Dab some more around your nostrils. Get some right up in. Right up in. You'll feel better. Projecting absolute confidence. That's not part of the thing. It says you'll feel better. Projecting absolute confidence. That's the way he said it, I guess. Because it's not about secret weapons or secret formulas. It's certainly not about honey. That's when they're putting the honey around their nose. It's about belief. Again, we tie back to the Stephen King universe. In it, they beat Pennywise by believing they can. Again, this all comes down to mind powers. It all comes down to the power of imagination. Even telepaths, telekinesis, uh, uh, pyrokinesis, all that stuff is the imagination. They imagine things happening and it happens. The entirety of Stephen King's universe, even Midworld as a whole, is about imagination. Midworld is a collection of all these stories. You got Harry Potter, the Marvel Universe, uh, the Wizard of Oz. All this stuff is is connected. And I, I know I'm getting super excited, like you know, like <laughs> like a like a nut job conspiracy truther or something like that. But I I dig how he has connected all of his stuff over the years, and I'm super excited to finally have proof in 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 this book that so many of these things do actually connect and it's not just my crazy mind because he has gone back and connected these things now the first you know two times I read these books did I notice all these connections no but the more that I read them the more that I see the little nuances the little times where King has just thrown in a line explaining something and it's like whoa, whoa wait wait, wait so how, how that connects that connects and it's one of those things it's all about belief and the power of imagination and if there's one theme for the Stephen King universe that I find just irresistible, a siren's call for the Stephen King universe is that thought that imagination is all powerful. And that, that's what, to this day, this dude, this author is still creating vast worlds and doing things differently and taking risks that no other author his age is doing or has done before. I honestly believe he is our greatest living st uh, storyteller. And I truly believe that through that, History will be very, very kind to Stephen King in in the later years who <laughs> were all around that people will look back at Stephen King and go, he was better than Shakespeare, he was better than Dickens. He's the one that we need to be focusing on because I don't think any other author has the output that he has, the eclectic output that he has, and has been consistently good 
throughout the years. You can say, oh, it's the old king's best king. Yeah, but we still have this whole this whole shelf down here, and over half of this this shelf from after '99, after the accident, or after King sobered up for good, kind of deal. Um, has has fantastic literature in it. Lisi story, Duma Key, The Outsider, you know, numerous, numerous ones. As far as belief is concerned, I love that idea that belief is the thing that holds together all of Stephen King's universe because he's a fiction writer. I mean, what else would, right? It just makes total sense. Um, and on page 617, you know, I, I tied, very loosely, I tied Tack into the Talisman universe. I'm sorry, because of the knights with the red eyes, right? Well, in here, in 617, there's a room with living cartoons in it. I mean, come on. Uh, you got the regulators there. We got, of course, we got uh, Ted Brodigan. Uh, da, 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 and 631. 631 is important for a tie-in to, uh, to Revival, but it's kind of, it's not literal. Um, what he's talking about when he's talking about ants here. So th they're talking about End World. They're in End World, and uh, Jack points at the ugly complication of struts and belts and girders and smoking chimneys. Okay. That is, that's not word for word, but that is a almost perfect description of what, uh, what's his name, Charlie? Jamie. Jamie sees in Revival. Charlie's the bad guy, or the, the bad guy. It, it continues on. Jack points to the ugly complication of struts and belts and girders and smoking chimneys. He points at the straining ants, okay? The straining ants. The big combination disappears up into the clouds and down into the dead ground. How far in each direction? A mile? Two? There are children above the clouds, shivering in oxygen masks as they trudge the treadmills and yank the levers and turn the cranks. Now, are there so many children that down below that they look like ants? Or is it literally, or is it literally the ants? from the end of Revival. 635, this is just a silly one that I picked out. Three worlds over from ours. Okay, three worlds over from ours. And in the great city, they're known as, oh, almost Londonorium, so London, basically. Uh, Turner Topham, or for two decades, a respected member of parliament, and for three, a sadistic pedophile, bursts abruptly into flame as he strides along the crowded avenue known as Piccadilly, D-E-R-R-Y, not Piccadilly Square, but Piccadilly. And Derry, once again, man, all this shit's connected. I, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, things like this uh, excite me, and I did not plan for Black House to be this far down the line. I planned to do Black House, you know, in order of publication. But for some odd reason, I, left, I decided to leave the Talisman books for way far down the line, and I'm glad I did, because Black House is one of those books that is hard connects my theory, um, and it's starting to feel less and less like my theory and more like Stephen King's game plan. That boy do be excitable, though. I also find it funny that throughout the video, the original video for Black House, you can see my the collar of my shirt get darker and darker. It was a hundred degrees in my office when I shot that video. Uh, well, it felt like a hundred degrees. It was 91 with a heat index of a hundred. And back then, I couldn't run the air conditioning while I was out in that shed. I've since moved offices, and I have more. I have a better climate-controlled uh, office. But here at the end of the video. I want to thank everyone who has stuck with me over the years and the reason why I'm saving it for the end of this video is because if you sat through all that you're my people and I appreciate each and every one of you this video the black house video was uploaded on June 20th of 2019 I would go on to lose my mother six months later and everything changed for me the excitable man that you saw in that video is no longer with us and it breaks my heart to have to say that but I rarely get excited like that anymore and I'm trying to rekindle that passion that goofiness and yes you do see a lot of it on the live streams but at the same time it's mostly a mask so here at the end I just wanted to thank everyone for hanging out with me 
all these years and being there supporting me through everything that I've been through. The future is is scary. I don't know where I'm going from here. And there are more videos after this one. But this is the last video I'm shooting because this is the video that means the most to me. I spent years trying to tie together these books and then I finally I finally came full circle and everything that I had said made sense. I proved all the detractors wrong and I proved that I could stick with something for other than my writing for the first time in my life, something that wasn't paying me. Uh, I was making maybe thirty, forty dollars a month back then from YouTube revenue, if that. Uh, and I had to fight for that. I had to fight for monetization. But like I said, here at the end, I want to thank every single one of you for being here. We still have, I believe, Sleeping Beauties will be up after this one. And then we have all the short story collections and all the novella collections. And those don't matter nearly as much as all of the books that I have done so far with the Redux series up until this point. The rest of it is just going to be fun. But this video is so important to me. In fact, I'm planning on going back and shooting a different intro that I can put before the intro, letting you guys know if you don't watch any other Stephen King theorist video of mine, please watch this one. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But anyways, uh, that's all the time I have for you today. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I need to know, did I miss anything? Do you have any corrections for anything I said in this video? And do you have your own theories about how the Talisman and Black House tie in to the Dark Tower and the Stephen King universe in general? But until next time, all hail the chair.